Hi, I'm Fred. And I'm Sarah, a.k.a. the Paris Quiz Mistress. We're two friends addicted to trivia, and we're watching... Rewatching... Alias. But this is... Not, not an, an Alias, alias podcast. podcast. All right, Fred. Yep. We have arrived at episode 11 of season two mm -hmm. of Not an Alias podcast, of course. Ooh. So before we get to the Not Alias bits, maybe we should just give our listeners a quick summary of a higher echelon. Mm -hmm. Ready, go. So this big brother echelon thing going on. Marshall is captured. There's going to be more orthodontics happening with him. Devon Crush is confirmed. And then, uh, oh, yeah, Miss Kane is on dad like Cracker Jack. She's on him. The whole thing is we have to save Marshall pretty much. Oh, hello, Dixon. You're still in the show. And then there's a love triangle thing happening maybe because Will knows that there's a crush on Vaughn at one point And it's like, hey, you better take care of that woman, you... <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Dixon and Sydney find Marshall in Mexico, and they go and do you know, the DJ, and then she goes and she kicks a bunch of... She kicks a Taiwanese guy off his wheelchair, and then they jump in the parachute, and Sloan is suspicious of that as well. Good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, this was, I think, a really strong episode with lots of things... Mm -hmm. to grab on to, but what did I choose to elaborate on in a trivia way? The most plausible of the things I wrote, because it's not epoxy or meat, is candy, because of the pest dispensers that are mentioned. No, it is not. Mm. But it is something to do with Marshall. Okay. What did he make instead of a copy of the Echelon software? Oh, Pong? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I have written you a quiz about vintage video games. Ooh, nice, 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 neato. Yeah, I think you may like. I am hopeful. I am cautiously optimistic. Let's find out. Fred, here is your quiz about vintage video games. Question number one. What video game character from 1982 was hailed as the femme fatale of the game world, with her game considered largely superior to that of her masculine counterpart. Her masculine counterpart meaning they look alike? They do look alike, yeah. Wait. <laughs> She's a character and superior to the male version, and she's iconic? Oh, and yeah. And what else? 1982. Mm hmm. So think old, old. The thing that's coming to my mind is Ms. Pac Man. That is correct. Oh, yeah? <laughs> But is there an actual Mr. Pac Man? I mean, just regular Pac Man. Oh, regular Pac Man. Yeah, he's is the it... man one. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so what's the difference between Pac-Man and Ms. Pac-Man? Because for me, I thought, oh, Pac-Man is just a woman. <laughs> no. <laughs> so Pac-Man is the little circle, mm -hmm. and Ms. Pac-Man is the little circle with a red bow on her head. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. So Pac-Man was the original game. Ms. Pac-Man was kind of the second version of mm -hmm. the arcade game, and you know, critics said it had better mazes, the ghosts had better personalities. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, because each ghost does a different defense, mm -hmm. which I'm not good enough at this game to realize, but it's true. Yeah, I didn't even know there were two, so I don't know anything about ghost behavior. <laughs> I think I got like the little like plug it into your TV directly like joystick version of this game from like <laughs> Spencer Gifts at some point, but yeah. Hmm. I was really into 80s like iconography as a tween. Hardcore 2D. Yeah. So I had Pac-Man earrings. I had Pac-Man like t-shirts. I had, you know. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Okay. A peek behind the curtain. Taking us back. <laughs> And another piece of the puzzle <laughs> falls into place. <laughs> Question two. The Street Fighter video game franchise debuted in 1987 and features playable characters such as Ryu, a Japanese martial artist, Blanca, a beast-like mutant from Brazil, 
Zangief, a professional wrestler and sambo fighter from the Soviet Union, and Witch, Chinese martial artist who also works as an Interpol officer. <laughs> I didn't know the totality of her CV, but Street Fighter was big when I was young. Oh, yeah. Big, big, big. It's Chun-Li. It's yeah. Chun-Li. Chun-Li's a cop. Yeah, Chun-Li is a cop. Yeah. <laughs> Chun-Li is also one of the monikers of uh, Nicki Minaj. Oh, more is More recently, it? yeah. I didn't she know that. She has a song called Chun-Li. And Blanca isn't the only weird one. <laughs> Blanca the Brazilian beast. I also have a um, limb-extending sort of Indian guru type called Dalsim. The fire-breathing yogi. Mm-hmm. Uh, plus, uh, you have uh, Gael, the uh, typical blonde GI man, like all muscled up. And you have Bison, the uh, the big villain, of course. And Ken, the blonde guy. Yep. Yeah. Ken, <laughs> the blonde guy who went to Japan a bunch. <laughs> or China. Japan. He's, he's BFFs with Ryu. Yeah, exactly. It's Japan, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Question number three. Which 1982 game was one of the largest commercial video game failures and often cited as one of the worst video games ever released? This game was based on a movie from the same year, 1982, which surpassed Star Wars to become the highest grossing film of all time. And I will also give you more information because this is a wiki hole. Mm -hmm. Um, Unsold copies were long rumored to have been part of the Atari video game Burial in a New Mexico landfill. What was this failure of a game? Isn't the uh, landfill story true? It is true. It is true, right? It is true, but it wasn't only this game. It was about (laughs) 10% of the games recovered was this game. Yeah. I remember listening to a bit of the story about this and the failures to make this game and possibly just rushing into production to do like an immense cash grab. It's E.T., the video game. Correct, yeah. E.T., the extraterrestrial, the game. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to know more about it again now. It's such a fascinating story about corporate people being so misguided. And just, yeah, dumping everything into desert. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was, it, they were saying it contributed to the, the video game crash of 1983. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean, E.T., the video game is just kind of like nerd shorthand for like, don't ship things too fast. Like, don't <laughs> move fast and break things, y'all, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Very interesting story. I'm, I'm going to catch up. Yeah. And, the, and then there was, a, there was a 2014 documentary about the landfill in New Mexico, where they excavated it. Because a lot of people thought it was just an urban legend kind of thing. But no, it was real. They really dumped a bunch of consoles, games, into a landfill, covered it over with cement. Wow. Yeah. I think that's about the time I first heard of the game and the landfill at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, like, the the stories are very linked. Um, Also, I should watch E.T. probably. I mean, you can. I've seen it once. I was probably, like... The appropriate Not, age? I guess. Um, Drew Barrymore's cute. Yeah. She was like five, so right when she started getting uh, into alcohol. <laughs> it's funny and true. It's not funny. Um, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true. She went to rehab at like 13. Yeah. Yeah. Question number four. Artist Frank Slama began creating street art in 1998 favoring the more durable ceramic tiles over spray paint. He kept a comprehensive database of all of his art, which today you can collect for points on an app. What is this artist's pseudonym? I had a first idea about the type of artwork. So I'm going to go and say is His nickname, Space Invader? Yeah, Invader. Invader. Yeah. Okay, okay. I didn't know it was also his name. Okay, cool. Yep. Cool. Is he French? Yep, Punk Slema is what I found a lot of references to as like his 
given name. Mm -hmm. But then some resources will also say his identity is unknown. But I don't think we actually know what he looks like. Okay. So, yeah, but he went to Bozach and French, presumably. Okay. Uses pixel sort of motifs, space invaders and sort of other characters with ceramic tiles. There are more than a thousand in Paris. There's also a few in other cities. And I do have some friends who are really addicted to flash invaders and trying to beat each other and beat, you know, other people on the app. And what's good is that it was created by the artist himself. Okay. So. It's just like who can spot the most tiles, pretty much. It's like Pokemon Go, but IRL. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Right. Okay, last question. Number five. In 1984, Russian developer Alexei Pajitnov created what classic video game originally marketed with the tagline, From Russia with Fun? <laughs> with 520 million copies sold, it is the best-selling video game of all time, according to IGN. Hmm. What's his name again, please? Alexei Pajitnov. Alexei Plajitnev, okay. Well, I know of one game that's come out, out of Russia, and I'm going to say Tetris. That is Tetris. So, yeah, overall copies from, like, you know, sort of different versions on different consoles and stuff. But, yeah, most of them being mobile. And would you like to, as a bonus, the points mm -hmm. don't matter, would you like to take a guess at the number two and number three best-selling games of all time? Oh, specific games. Uh, is Super Mario in there? No. Ooh. I think Mario's yeah. probably counted as separate games. Yeah. Pokemon as well? I don't have Pokemon. Yeah, I think I know about franchises, not specific video games. Is the Bible the game in there? No. <laughs> is it also two old games? Very old? No, I wouldn't say so. Metal Gear Solid? No. Tomb Raider? No. Action? I don't really know about video games. Sports? No. I'll just give it to you. <laughs> number two. Of us. Number two is Minecraft. Oh, yeah. Number three, like Fortnite? No. Number three is Grand Theft Auto V. Oh, wow. It sold that much? All right. 185 million and Minecraft was uh, 300 million. Kablamo. Nice work on your classic video game quiz, Fred. Thank you. Let us now have a little chit-chat about a higher echelon. Okay, I'm going to start with an element that's maybe not a big part of the show, but I just want to get your thoughts about it. When Sydney discusses Vaughn with Francie, She describes him as many things, and one of the things she says is that he's funny. Vaughn is funny? Vaughn isn't funny. I mean, yeah, I never really had a tee-hee moment. He, you know, like, he he's, he's has qualities, if you are into that. You know, hot, cute versus goofy, cute. Sure, hot, cute. But funny isn't one of his qualities. <laughs> uh, so I'm like, okay, she's a... Uh, Definitely in love because she doesn't know what she's talking about anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's go back to uh, more martial things and uh, pings and semi Hagar. He launched a DDoS attack against SD6. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty cool. Just to send a ping. I appreciated that. Yeah. And it was one of those things where it's on the screen. You could have figured it out, but you didn't. And then you're surprised. And then Dixon figured this out. And I was like, oh. Very well done. I thought that was a great plot element. Who would be smart enough to hack into SD6 but not remember to cover their tracks? And of course, it's Marshall. So he launched a DDoS attack and left his IP address, which, I mean, I guess the terrorists aren't using a VPN. That's fine. Whatever. It's 2001, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So they found him. Mm -hmm. He, like, he got rescued. Very well done. Wicked smart. And then he had the parachute as well, which has been set up. So it's okay to use it this time. And he jumped out of the window. I love the line, my name is Marshall Flinkman and I'm here to rescue you. <laughs> he saved Sydney. Yeah, he lives his best life as a spy for a day. I liked it. It was kind of a good parallel to when you thought Will like wasn't going to fight back. The people who aren't 
like badass spies in the show at the end of the first season when Will like kicks the same guy's butt and paralyzes him. Yeah. One out of five, bitch. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, you were thinking, oh, Marshall, like, he's nice, but he's gonna... He's helpless. He's gonna sing like a... What do you say? Dove? <laughs> no. Angel? You're gonna sing like a canary. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, you were just like, I have no faith in this guy. And he actually... Yeah. He didn't give them the codes to the NSA. <laughs> Nope. No, it's like I'm just writing Pong. Writing Pong and launching a, an attack. <laughs> From memory. I wonder how hard that would be. <laughs> I don't know, but I wouldn't try it. <laughs> I mean, me neither. Do you want to know the only thing I ever coded? Yes, tell me. I coded a CV that contained many GIFs from the Real Housewives. <laughs> <laughs> Was it like uh uh, automatically refreshing uh, GIFs CV kind of thing? No, no. They were static. <laughs> <laughs> also, at the beginning, when um, Sydney was explaining what Echelon was to Will, <laughs> and she's like, the government doesn't abuse it. And Will's like, okay. <laughs> sure. So Will is Edward Snowden. Pretty much. At this point. Basically. Yep. Mm -hmm. So he knows... Will knows. But this is also one of those times where I'm just like, they were talking about something that, were we even aware of it? They were basically whistleblowing. On the NSA 12 years in advance. Yeah. Yeah. Because now we watch and you are like, of course they do. But back then it was like, you know, conspiracy. They're catching terrorists. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Will is like, yeah, I believe you. It requires the sacrifice of some personal freedoms. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Um, the CIA didn't make me a junkie to quote unquote save my life. Dixon's a DJ now. Yeah. And he says, I speak nine languages, but techno isn't one of them. I don't even think he was playing techno. <laughs> he was not. It was just some sort of like stock. <laughs> it was the same Euro trash. Yeah. I, uh, anyways. It's like, yeah, sure. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mexico, but still Euro trash. What did you think of the epoxy torture? Very scary. Very scary. That's another one that has stuck with me all these years. Yeah, it made me feel quite uncomfortable to imagine what would happen if the guy dropped a hardener in his throat. Ooh, seems like actually terrible, terrible torture. That Taipei guy is scary. Super scary. He has, he has moves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, in weird science moments, I also want to mention gun barrel brain matter DNA. Because apparently when uh, Dad killed Halatki, that's on the Miss Kane mission, there's just brain that's stuck to the gun from like nine months ago that's still usable for DNA. I, uh, I'm like, this is weird super science that I do not believe in. I refuse. I didn't, I didn't even blink. I was like, sure. I didn't think about it until right now, but just the, you know, the fire part of the gun would have burned everything. It's not like it's fresh tissue. It's just, just like all burn, all splat. I don't even want to know. I'm just like, sure, you figured out a lot key. Which Vaughn doesn't say anything about. He's reacting to it next to a black guy who plays ball. Yo, daddy. Yeah, right. Didn't mention the fact that, oh, you just discovered he killed a CIA guy who was a mole. He's just too busy to take care of that. Yeah, I mean, he's already taken care of. It's fine. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> the pseudoscience that I was like, hmm, about was the light pulses <laughs> that made them go, go sleep sleepy sleeps yeah yeah I, i'm just like yeah right it's like magic hypnosis i'm like yeah the brain waves i mean it's fine they can't just like gas a room every time you know yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like yeah find new ways to put people to sleep i understand all right well we will see you back next week for the getaway Ooh, hot damn what could that mean Thanks for listening to Not an Alias Podcast, produced by Celia Brando with original music by Mad98. If you love what we do, leave us a tip. The link to the tip jar is in the description. And you can follow all things trivia at Paris Quiz Mistress. And all things Fred at Fred Me Up. Until next time, stay nerdy and keep quizzing. <laughs> <laughs>